Today we'll be focusing on installation, configuration, and basic use. In addition to working with and organizing documents, basic use will also cover the management of users, groups, and simple access control lists. In a few Copying the link location, so we can download it inside of our container. We have retrieved the Knowledge Tree Linux Universal Installer Tarball. Let's take a look inside. You can see that it extracts to its own directory. It has a readme and an executable script. Let's extract it. Skipping the documentation, as all good systems administrators do, let's dive directly into the script. In lieu of executing the script entirely, what I'd like to do is audit it and manually reproduce the steps that it executes. This way, if there are any problems with the installation, we'll have a much better idea of what's going on. So going through the script, you can see that it has explicit checks for the community and certified or commercial editions, a warning for unsupported distributions, an explicit check for Debian, which is excellent, always a good sign. Here we see the software repositories that it will add for Red Hat based distributions. And here we see Debian sources.list entries that we will presumably need to add. And indeed, that's what the installation script does. It also adds the cryptographic keys for those repositories, so we'll need to reproduce that as well. Let's go ahead and do this right away. and apt key completed successfully. And again, going back to the script, it will apt get install a package. And that is the entirety of the script. At the end, it prints out a message saying the installation was uh, successful or if it failed. So let's run apt get update to ensure that our reconfiguration of the sources.list was correct. So the first thing that we're going to do here is create some users and groups so that we can use them for our demonstration. The knowledge tree administrator dashboard can be reached by clicking administration in the navigation bar in the top left hand side of each page. Let's start by going into the users and groups section. Now knowledge tree users and groups are broken down into users, groups, and units. Units are sections of the document management system folder hierarchy generally set aside for a particular group. What's interesting is that you can assign unit administrators, which act as partial super users for just those locations in the tree. Let's start by creating a unit, and we will add a new unit for a theoretical finance group. I'll click Next. And now, because a folder is being created for this unit, we need to choose where we would like it located in the tree. Our tree is empty, so we'll select the root folder and click Create Unit. Now let's create some groups. Groups in Knowledge Tree are typically created in pairs. You would have a privileged administrators group as well as a regular users group. So for our finance groups, we will have administrators and users. So we'll create finance users first. We will set them as part of the finance group. We will create group. And we will also create finance administrators. We'll set them to be part of the finance unit. 
And here we will set the finance administrators group to be administrators of the finance unit and click create group. And let's create a couple of users. And click add a new user. We'll start by creating a finance user. Most of the settings here are simple and should be fairly self-explanatory. I'll click create user. I'll also create a finance administrator. Note that usernames can have spaces in them. Now, I would like to assign these users to groups. You can't see an obvious way to do that from this screen. In order to select a user to edit it, you need to first search for it or click the View All Users button.